Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik down here in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. If you have any questions about what's going on with the forecast, we've got a ton of information to talk about for tonight, including more frost possible across much of the area. Things are very much on the quiet side for now, but as we go into the next couple of days, maybe seeing some changes heading our direction, including the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms as we get into and around the area after Halloween and into the early part of November. Not exactly, again, a big shocker there because this is typically one of the rainier months of the year coming up as we go into November. So we'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Questions, concerns, anything in the way of an idea about what we can feature on here, let me know. Blue bar up there in the phone thingy, austin.onic at wreg.com. If you've never been here before, welcome to our exclusive video online weather blog. It's called Weather Overtime, and we try to tape this almost every single day that we possibly can. More information on the forecast, again, available here in the blue bar. Social media information here also up there just above wreg.com slash weather and over there on the graphic as well. So a good opportunity to see a little bit more as to what's going on with the forecast here in the Mid-South area. We do see, again, the potential for some pretty chilly weather coming our way for Halloween. So for the ghosts and goblins, that could be of a concern. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little while. Currently in the Mid-South, we have no rainfall whatsoever to talk about. Things are very quiet at this time and also very dry. Just not seeing anything out there in the way of potential moisture for the time being. So if you have any plans for outdoors, at least you're not going to be needing anything in the way of an umbrella so definitely good news on that and probably going to be dry in the course of the next couple of days uh, looking about the possibility of some more rainfall coming our way as we get past Halloween, but there is a little caveat on that. We'll take a look at that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get right to it and show you more about what's going on out there. Again, temperatures in the Mid-South at this time, mainly the mid to upper 30s for the most part. It's back to the east of the metro area where temperatures will be falling off uh, into and around the area of the lower 30s again into tomorrow morning. So there is going to be that possibility of frost back across the Mid-South. But as of right now, most of the Mid-South is showing temperatures again in the 30s, 40s, even close to around, say, 50 degrees. But that's all the way back over toward around uh, Jackson County in Arkansas. 45 degrees at the Briarc location in downtown Memphis. 40 degrees already in Rossville, Tennessee. 40 also in Hernando. And 41 degrees, it looks like, around Drummond's. Also 40 degrees back up toward Dyersburg at this time. So we do have some pretty chilly weather up there. Did have one report of an earthquake this morning, not quite as big as the one that we saw about a week and a half, two weeks ago. This one north of Dyersburg, almost directly under the Mississippi River, and this one was a 2.0 earthquake that happened just before 2 o'clock in the morning uh, on Sunday morning. So if you felt this one, again, please remember to go to the Did You Feel It page from the uh, Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis and also to the United States Geological Survey page and fill out a report on this so that you can help scientists and seismologists learn a little bit more about what's going on out there. Back to hurricanes. Philippe is now basically just a disorganized mess of rainfall moving its way up the East Coast. It's not doing anything in the way of anything tropical. Winds are still a little breezy at this time, about 60 miles per hour, so that's going to cause problems into the area uh, up around Chesapeake Bay and into around the area of New England. Out a little farther into the Atlantic, we do have a new disturbance. Uh, this one, again, going to be possibility wandering, or they, as they say here, uh, potential of it meandering very flowery language for the uh, National Hurricane Center. That's going to be going between Bermuda and the Azores. It looks like this isn't going to be too much of a problem way out into around the Atlantic, so that doesn't look to be a problem, so we won't be working our, our way toward the r name storm anytime soon. But if you are going to be working your way uh, toward the East Coast in the next couple of days, that's where we may see some of the problems out there. Lots of rainfall taking place from around the outer banks of North Carolina all the way up into around New England at this time. And that's going to continue onwards, not to mention some snowfall from areas of the uh, Smokies back into and around the area of the Appalachians, the Blue Ridge, the Shenandoah, picking up some snow out there. Uh, Bozo Wolfolk, thanks for joining us from Senatovia. Kevin Dunn from Brighton. Welcome, Gloria Davis. 
Uh, thanks a lot for coming on through, for watching the show for later on tonight. John McKinney, welcome to the show. Likewise, Kimberly Fryer as well. Thanks for stopping by on a Sunday night. Now, we have a new storm system heading our way, this one over the Plain States, but it's not exactly a huge uh, problem at this point in time. It looks like a lot. When you take a look at all the moisture sitting up here, a lot of echoes showing up on radar, but number one, this is coming in from off the central part of the continent up into around portions of Canada, so this is really limited moisture. It looks like it's pretty widespread, but this is not a huge storm system in the sense that we're going to be getting dumped on by a whole bunch of rain and snow and stuff like that. Add to that, number two most important thing, is that if you look where this thing is heading down toward the south and east in this uh, weather report page brought to you by uh, Penn State Meteorology, so thanks a lot to them for this page, it's all that moisture up north of us is heading into very dry air, so it's doubtful we're going to be seeing too much of anything tomorrow with that front making its way on through. That front itself, again, by tonight is going to be right over Missouri and Kansas into northern Oklahoma and getting a little bit closer to us by tomorrow morning around daybreak with Todd Demers on the air at 4.30. The front will be just about ready to make its way into the Mid-South and should be slicing right through the I-40 corridor as we get into around, it looks like about noon or so. And that's going to be where the winds start to switch coming in from out of the northwest, giving us some slightly cooler air. But tomorrow, not looking at a lot of major concern out there. Now, Area of low pressure back to the west of us and high pressure to the east of us work together to kind of bring in a lot of moisture in tandem from off the Gulf of Mexico and partly from off the Pacific. Not a lot, but it will be enough to start giving us some more chances of showers. And unfortunately, it looks like by right around... Tuesday evening, there is going to be the possibility of some showers moving into the area. Now, that could spell some problems with trick-or-treaters. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Tonight, if you have any plants outdoors, it's going to be the eastern parts of the viewing area that see the most problems. A frost advisory in the light blue shaded category counties from Dyersburg down to Oxford uh, does not include the metro area specifically, but just to the east of there. And the best possible possibility of frost is going to be in the purple shaded counties. That's a freeze warning from Jackson back to the Tennessee River. That's going to be the best possibility of killing frost once again. So if you have any plants out left outside, plants, plants left outside, not plans, uh, bring the plants in or cover them up in these areas. Or if you want to, again, west of the metro and south, that's also some place that you're going to be needing to kind of make certain that you keep them at least covered or indoors just in case. You never can tell when the temperatures may take a bit of a dip where you are. But most of the temperatures, the coldest temperatures, will be here in the blue and purple shaded counties for later on tonight. All right, forecast time. Let's see what we got for tonight. Temperatures back in the 30s and 40s across much of the area, so a pretty chilly night out into the area. Tipton traffic. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for sharing the reports. And everybody feel free to do the same thing. Take our uh, Facebook reports here. And if you're on Periscope and Twitter, feel free to pass them along as well. High temperatures Monday, a lot warmer back in the mid to upper 60s, even 70 degrees into around north parts of Mississippi. Winds will be turning to the north. You see, notice the winds out of the southwest here, and then coming in from out of the northwest back into and around uh, portions of the rest of the afternoon. It's not going to really drop the temperatures that much. It will be, again, very mild out there. You're just going to kind of notice the winds blowing out of a different direction. There could be some cloud cover with this, looking at about a 25% cloud cover up around Jonesboro, 32 up around uh, the Union City, Dyersburg area. So we're not looking at, again, uh, huge amounts of clouds. This is going to be a very moisture-starved system. There's just no other way around that. So we'll see some clouds out there, but that's really going to be about it. And and the rest of the Mid-South is not really seeing too much of anything out there to worry about for right now. Monday night, the low temperatures back in the high 30s to the lower 40s. Will be a little breezy at first, but winds should calm down overnight to about 5 miles per hour or less coming in out of the north-northeast. Now for Tuesday, the full force of that cold air drops into the area and high temperatures will be about 10 degrees cooler on Tuesday than what they were on Monday. So we're going to warm up on Monday, drop down on Tuesday, warm back up again on Wednesday. 
suffice it to say, I hope you like variety in your forecast because you are going to be getting it this week, no question about that. We're still not seeing anything in the way of rain west of the Mid-South through the afternoon on Tuesday, through about rush hour on Tuesday afternoon and evening, and decently on the cool side as well. When the kids get out of school, temperatures will be back into the mid-50s uh, out there. Robert Williams, thank you very much uh, for dropping on by uh, out there. Agaya David Green, wind chills near 47 in Leon County, Florida, and Tallahassee. That's pretty cold weather for Tallahassee. Of course, those winds are probably breezy with Philippe moving on through. All right, Tuesday night going again for temperatures right about the time uh, trick-or-treating kicks off in the upper 40s into around Union City, Dyersburg, lower 50s, Jonesboro, Memphis, I-40, mid-50s, south of I-40, southeast Arkansas, and back into around portions of the area close to northern Mississippi. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting because the green is where we're looking at the potential for some light showers taking place right about the time the trick-or-treaters are hitting the streets, 6.30 to 7 p.m. or so. Again, we're hoping that holds off. And again, keep in mind that we are looking at relatively dry air, Humidity by the time the rainfall starts will be in about the 40 to 50 percent range. That should hopefully help to kind of eat away some of the rainfall making its way down to the surface. But again, it doesn't really look like much at this point. Now, as we go toward the end of the evening, trick or treaters wrapping things up, uh, getting really jazzed up on sugar, then we see even more rainfall starting to make its way into the Mid-South. Sissy Samuels, yes, getting some rain out there, but not a lot for the time being. Looks like just showers, too. No mention of any thunderstorms here, but hopefully the rain, again, holds off until afterwards, but some trick-or-treating, especially to the west of the Mississippi River, might have to be curtailed by just a little bit anyway, so not looking at a lot, but still could be that possibility out there, so again, please keep that in mind if you have any plans, and keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on that. First night of November, first day of November, I should say. High temperatures rebounding again, back upwards again into the mid-upper 60s, and chances of rainfall all over the place for the Mid-South for Wednesday. Also into Thursday, looking at chances of rain, the T on here that you see, T slash RW, is thunder plus thunder showers, thunderstorms mixed in with showers, basically, and that's what we're going to be seeing for the most part there. Again, so far it does not look like severe weather, but it does look like there will be chances of rainfall for the Mid-South right on into Friday, and that's what you're looking at here. And chances of rainfall looks like it could be sticking around right on into Saturday. And let's go ahead and skip ahead to Saturday night. And chances for rainfall just pretty well sticking across uh, the entire area at this time. So just not seeing anything in the way of any dry weather anytime soon. Now, November is typically one of the rainier months of the year. So this is not entirely a big surprise uh, to see anything like this going on at this point in time. So more rainfall possible into the next several weeks. We can also get severe weather. As I segue into this graphic, please remember that if you have not taken Skywarn training, now would be a great time to do so because we are getting close to that second, technically we're already in that second severe weather season peak of the year. Late October through about mid-December, we can get some very nasty storms coming through here. So please keep that in mind. And if you have the opportunity to attend one of these sessions, next one is tomorrow, Monday the 30th, Corinth, Mississippi, at uh, 2759 South Harper Road. Point of contact is Mr. Ricky Gibbons. Email and phone number available here. After that, Later on this week, on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the 2nd of November, Lawrence County, Black Rock Elementary School, Black Rock, Arkansas. Chris Jones, the contact information there, and definitely a good opportunity to learn more about severe weather and how to be ready for it. Now, some of you have been pointing out, yes, there is no training session for Memphis or Shelby County in this list. Usually the National Weather Service doesn't teach one in the fall. They'll do it in the springtime. The fall classes are available for a lot of the other uh, communities around the Mid-South that don't normally get this training. So it's a good opportunity for them to pick up a little bit more about what's going on out there. Uh, if you'd like to know more about this, contact the National Weather Service. If you can attend the meeting and you would like to have the National Weather Service uh, visit your business, your place of worship, uh, your school, your volunteer organization. You can set up stuff like that, and you can email them at the webmaster at sr-meg.wx at noaa.gov. Okay, well, 
that right there is probably a little bit of information. So let me show you the easy way to do this. Go to the National Weather Service webpage. That's weather.gov, weather.gov. Go down to the Mid-South area on the map. Click on the map. It'll take you directly to the National Weather Service forecast office. Go up to the headline, become a storm spotter, and bada bing, bada boom, there you are. And the information for contact is down here with the email address and even more contact information at the lower portion of your screen, including the phone number for the National Weather Service forecast office in Memphis at 544-0399 if you have any questions about this. And for point of contact, uh, information on these classes, again, for people who... Uh, run the sites who are liaisons to the National Weather Service. All those are listed in the right-hand column over here, so a good opportunity to see more at that location as well. I will have an update on the forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, so stay tuned for that. We'll also have an update on the traffic situation uh, down in Como, Mississippi where we had some sort of an incident taking place uh, that caused a major backup today. A lot of law enforcement uh, personnel at the scene were still working out details as to what went on, but massive traffic backup around I-55 and Como. We'll have more details on that with Troy Washington. Kristen Harrelson will have all the day's news. Mike Sadie has a very busy day in sports coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. More information on my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 and Bob and Josh switch to their new time, 8 to 10 a.m., starting tomorrow morning on Yahoo Sports Radio. They were on the air from 7 to 9, now an hour later to keep you updated and informed as to what's going on. So join me on Yahoo Sports Radio, a.m. 730. If you can't listen on the air, listen online at Talkback Live. Uh, network.org, and you can find out uh, more information on their Tipton traffic administrator saying a standoff from a chase for a murder suspect. Okay, thank you very much for that. And again, we'll have the latest details on that coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, Todd Demers will have more bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak if you'd like to know more about that. We'll have a complete update of the forecast on News Channel 3 at 10. And don't forget about this weather forecast. This will be posted in just a little bit at wrhe.com slash weather and on all these social media networks as well. So stay tuned for more on that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining me for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Stay tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online for the latest information, news, weather, and sports.